This bill is draconian. It does nothing to solve the core problems that we face. It's just more tinkering by this minister. Matt Ducey. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure and an honour to rise in wholehearted support <coughs> of the Resource Legislation Amendment Bill in its second reading. And I must say, Mr Speaker, what a very subdued Phil Twyford, uh, I must say. In, in fact, no when I reflect, uh, no, exactly, no, no passion, uh, no belief, no I don't think. You can just imagine uh, Mr Twyford and the other opposition members of Parliament been given their comms notes for this bill this morning, Mr Speaker, and thinking, really, is that what I'm going to have to say to a bill that will remove livestock from waterways, that will simplify planning rules and bring in national planning templates, as well as improving capacity planning uh, for much-needed residential and housing, Mr Speaker? When I reflect on what's happened in the Waimakariri since the earthquakes, under Great the place. land use recovery Great plan, uh, the government was able to step in uh, and free up land. Yes, what we know out. is when we free up land, uh, it uh, increases supply, which equals demand. When you look of needing to replace 18,000 houses, uh, which we've gone on to rebuild 23,000, with only an annual house price inflation of 1 or 2 per cent. So it shows quite rightly that when the authorities start to plan ahead and think about some of the constraints through land, which is restricting housing for many New Zealanders, that is the answer. And that's exactly what this bill will do, Mr Speaker. Uh, in its second reading, so we went through the select committee stage, I must acknowledge the very hard-working uh, Scott Simpson, who's the chair, for a very big bill. We dealt with 764 submissions. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget our former uh, Deputy yeah. Chair, uh, Sarah Dowie, uh, and our new Deputy Chair, Andrew Bailey, for shepherding this bill through the legislative process. Uh, 86 submissions from business, 544 from individuals, 57 from local government, uh, and 44 from environmental and community groups, Mr Speaker. I just want to finish with a quote of one of the submissions from Dame Margaret Baisley from Environment Canterbury. When she talks about supporting this bill and the addition of significant risks from natural hazards as a matter of national importance, as well as the new function for regional councils to ensure sufficient development capacity to meet long-term demand for urban development. They also go on to say they support the two proposed new planning process options and the provisions for involving iwi and policy and plan development. Ah, and that iwi. is why, Mr ah. Speaker, in the second reading, I support this bill to the House. Kia ora. <laughs> Members, the question is that the amendments recommended by the Local Government and Environment Committee by majority be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye.